program set up by the small community. It's ran by the youth from ages of 14 and up. We have a director who directs and coordinates our program to make sure everything runs smooth. And when he's not here, we have adults who come in and volunteer their time into watching our program. And when we see adults getting involved, we know that they care for this program and we want to see it successful. And that's really what it's about. The program started about hmm, two years ago to satisfy the needs of our community. The parents who work can't afford to pay for babysitters, which forces older children to stay with smaller brothers and sisters. Therefore, that, that leaves older kids, they cannot seek the help they need from maybe the summer school, but over here, um, all kids can come and they all can learn. And so, and this program is really a way to keep our youth off the street because we learn to work together and care for one another according to our Christian upbringing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think some of the parents feel good because um, when they go back to school, the kids, some of the kids are more advanced that we help them in learning things, you know? Um, like if they're in one state, um, we can bring them up to a, another state higher than <clears throat> what they are in now. And I think some of the parents feel good about it because they know that their kids are safe here and that they're learning well. Both Trace and Vivian touched upon three main objectives of our program, which are, one, to provide free child care service to the community, two, to provide a safe location in which children are supervised and given responsibilities that are comparable to their level of ability, and three, to foster Christian-based values that are geared towards developing productive and caring citizens. It begins as adult supervisors and tutors start finding me and they prepare the uh, materials and things needed for the program. And then as they're preparing, kids file in and they pose a little with other kids. And then at 9 o'clock, right about 9 o'clock, uh, a whistle blows. And when that whistle blows, kids start to line up and they're ready to go to the first period. There are four periods. There's math, reading, art, and PE. Uh, well, the four activities are reading, math, PE, and art. Um, in math, um, they're pre-tested by adults or teachers, and um, it just shows the tutor what level they're in, and the mm -hmm. tutor tries to help them out in what level they need. And, okay. and in reading, they're also pre-tested, and 
the students are given a paragraph and some questions to answer, and um, they, we try to help them out in their vocabulary too. And in art, there are, um, there are art projects given to each group, and um, there are prizes awarded to the top um, project. And um, the, some of these art projects given are um, top of design, decoupage, um, mobile making, candle making, and other craft things. And then uh, PE, we have, um, we have a boys and girls class, and we have them do their exercise, start them off with exercises, and then we have them, sometimes we have them running a lap, and uh, then we put them in their activities, you know, let them play anything they want. Halfway through the program, the children has a 20 minute recess. Today, they decide to dance. As evident from this activity, the children have adapted the style of music and dance popular with the youth of the gender community. Although the majority of our children were born and raised in the United States, many still retain clothing indigenous to the Samoan culture. For instance, the Sarong type cloth known as the Ian of the Lava. This clothing article is used by both male and female. This is Fatu Misale Fu, and as you see, he really enjoys dancing. In the face of culture diversity, we have built into the summer program the teaching of Samoan language in order to maintain our cultural heritage and identity. Along with the remedial assistance and continuous practice in math and reading and enrichment activities, the cultural lessons provide that balance necessary in helping the Samoan child develop a positive self-image. in the Samoan language continues at home and in the Samoan church Sunday school classes. 29 is this at the bottom, okay? I'm going to take the first. a student in our program, explains how she learns the Samoan language and why. I see. Uh, are you learning anything in your Samoan? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we um, study um, about Jesus Christ and uh -huh. we, we say, the um, Samoan Bible. So the Samoan Bible is used to, so you can learn your language, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you know the Samoan language before? Uh -uh. Uh, what, what have you learned up to this point? Oh, I learned lots of things. You learn how to read it? You learn how to speak what? Well, I learned how to read it, but only a little bit, because oh. I'm not that good yet. And how do you start learning? Uh, with what the alphabet. You start with the alphabet, mm -hmm. I see, and then you move on to your reading? Yeah. Are you understanding the words? Uh, well, my grandma's helping me on that. She's helping you also. Why do you want to even learn anything about Samoa? Oh, uh, because, um, because I'm part of it and I want to learn my language. Oh, I see. Built into the cultural lessons are the songs and dances of Samoa. The children practice the Samoan language not only in speaking situations, but also in singing. Here, while singing, the children attentively follow the cue given by the fa'aluma, the person standing, who directs them in swaying and clapping while singing their song. They, they have this, you know, dancing thing that we are going to have a luau, and um, they, you know, do get together and practice on their Samoan dancing, and um, that's when the the uh, most enjoyable parts of the Samoan uh, culture is that they dance and be together. How do the kids, do they, well, how are their reaction to the dancing? Yeah, they love it. I, I know that they love, you know, being with each other. And I just like to see them together. Mm -hmm. It really helps, you know, to the program, too, because 
Mm -hmm. you know, they all come and they all look forward to being together. A program such as this depends heavily upon community support and cooperation. Here, some community volunteers have donated their time in attending to the physical needs of the program. These volunteers are setting up a tent to provide shade for the children during their PE and recess activities. Our tutors are divided into four groups. Each week, the tutor groups rotate responsibilities, which include recess duty, storage and material inventory, maintenance duty, and lunch duty. It's lunchtime, and tutor Paula Fulmerona is setting up for lunch. Her group is assigned lunch duty this week. Her group's responsibilities are to see that the children wash their hands before lunch, set the table, seat the children, lead the group in prayer, and make certain the children clean up after eating. Yeah. After a full morning of activities, the children have really worked up an appetite. The children take their time to eat and are encouraged to eat all on their plates for as much as they can. Many children do ask for seconds of their favorite food. The four food groups are represented in today's lunch. Lunch is not only delicious, but nutritious. Danny Boy takes his time to chew every morsel. He certainly enjoys his lunch. The children have learned to clean up after eating. There are a total of 10 objectives that serve as guidelines for a summer program. They include, one, to provide remedial and continuous practice in the areas of math and reading. Two, to provide a location in which children are supervised and given responsibilities that are comparable to their level of ability. Three, to instill and foster Christian-based values that are geared towards developing productive and caring citizens. Four, to promote Fat Samoa, that is, the training of our cultural heritage, maintaining our cultural identity. Five, to provide enrichment, experience, and art. Six, to provide interpersonal and leadership training, learning how to get along with one another, and to build self-confidence, promoting positive self-image. Seven, to provide free child care service to the community. Eight, to provide tutoring and child care training to our tutors. Nine, to provide training to our tutors on work ethics. And ten, to create a disciplined yet flexible learning experience and environment. Our summer program continues to evolve through the years to meet the needs that arise. It has been, is, and will continue to be as successful as long as there is community support. Our determining factors include setting objectives that addresses the needs and concerns of the community, planning and organizing the program according to the objectives, and planning the program by having it directed by dedicated adult volunteers with an expertise in education, and finally, to utilize periodic evaluations and counseling sessions to determine if we are indeed on target in accomplishing those tasks outlining our objectives. Now, how do our children feel about the Mama Mama Summer Program? Well, I think it, it, it's exciting, you know. I have a lot of fun. Uh, I think the teachers are, I mean, the tutors are great. 
I think it's fun and exciting. It gives me a chance to make friends, make new friends, and say hi to all the relatives and, and more. I think it's great.